Hello everyone, I'm Tony from The Corrupted Gaming Show, and I am very excited to come here and make this video for you guys, because I just reached my first goal on Patreon, and I will read to you exactly what this goal says upon reaching it, what I would do. Upon reaching this goal, I will make a tutorial video for you guys about how I make streams. This will include what programs I'm using, what equipment, and just general things about streaming I've learned over time. So this is very exciting, this is basically going to be an overview tutorial of from start to finish, how you could do live streaming very similar to how I do it. Basically exactly how I do it. Now I'd like to stress that this is not the perfect way to stream, certainly not, but it is the way I do it and it's the way that works for me, so I hope that this tutorial is helpful for you guys. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. Now the very first place to start is on YouTube itself, because that's where I do all of my streaming. Now once you have live streaming enabled for yourself on YouTube, you want to go to your live streaming page and then go to stream now you're going to be met with a page that's very similar to this. Now it's pretty self-explanatory, your chat's over here, you've got stream options, monetization cards, these are all things that we're not really going to touch on. You've got your title here, you got your description that'll go in your video, you can schedule exactly when you want your stream to start, you can set a category, you can put what game you're going to be playing. All of this is, is pretty basic and stuff that you can just sort of know what it is by taking a glance at it. Now the main important thing of why we're here is right down here. Now this thing right here, the stream name slash key, is very important. What you're going to need to do is you're going to reveal it and then copy it. Now the reason you want to do this is because this stream key tells your streaming software exactly where to put it. Now if you guys had my stream key, for example, and put it into your streaming software, you would be streaming directly to my channel. So this is important for you to have. Speaking of your streaming software, I'm going to show you exactly what streaming software I have. And the streaming software that I use is called OBS Studio. It's free, it's easy to use, and it's pretty fantastic. I would recommend it to just about anybody, especially if you're just starting out. Now that you've got your stream key still saved, you're going to want to open up settings, and you want to go over here, and you're going to see where it says stream key, and you're going to show it. And then you just paste it right in there, easy peasy, and it'll work exactly the way it's supposed to. Now, how does this how does this whole thing work? It's pretty basic. You press the start streaming button. When your stream key is put in there, it'll start streaming whatever is on your screen here live to everyone to see. Now, how do we make it look like this? That is a very important thing and where we're going to start. Now, the main thing about OBS is it's got two sections. It's got scenes and it's got sources. Now, scenes are basically the command hubs for what's going to be on the screen. And sources are the individual things that will be put on the screen itself. So we're going to go ahead and make a new scene, and we're going to name it Test Scene. And as you can see, it is now a blank canvas. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Sources, and one at a time, I'm going to walk you guys through exactly how you could have a basic stream. These are the exact sources that we're going to use to make our basic live stream. Game capture, image, browser source, and window capture. I'm now going to go one at a time and explain what each one of these sources will do and how that'll directly influence what your main stream will look like. I'm now going to go one at a time and explain what each one of these sources will do and how that'll directly influence what'll appear on your streaming screen. Now your game capture is your most important source, so we're going to go over to game capture, we're going to right click it and click on properties, and from here we're going to choose capture specific window, and then select exactly what window we want to use. Now for this example I'm going to use Stardew Valley as our, as our streaming game. We're going to select it, we're not really going to touch anything that's over here, and we're just going to click OK. So as you guys can see here, Stardew Valley is on the screen, it's ready to go, we can move it around and we can resize it, we can make it go upside down, reverse, do whatever we want to it. Now the important thing to know about this is that it sort of fits in a grid, you'll see. It just sort of snaps in and easily falls into corners and against other sources if we do have them. So now that we've got our game ready to go, you could just start like this. Streaming with just the game is perfectly acceptable, and at this point, you're pretty much ready to go. You just gotta resize it, make it take up the whole screen, and you're all set. But we're gonna make it look a bit more fancy, so let's go ahead and we'll move on to the next source. Now the image source puts images on the screen, which is important because that's what we're gonna need to make our overlay. So for the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna head on over to Photoshop, as that's the program I use to make my overlay, and we're gonna make a basic overlay for the stream. 
And in Photoshop, you're going to want to go over to File, and you're going to want to set it to 1920 by 1080 pixels. We're just going to click OK. Now this blank canvas is the exact same size as the OBS display window, and that's important because we want it to fit. So we're going to go ahead and just grab the paintbrush tool, and we'll select mm, green. Green's a good color, I guess. And we're just going to draw on it, just like this. Easy peasy. And why not? We'll put some stuff over here. Make it go all, all on the bottom and top of the screen. And we'll go over to the text. We'll put a text window here. And make sure that the text is turquoise, because kids like when colors are turquoise. We're going to go over here to Comic Sans, everyone's favorite font. And we'll just put it in italic because we want our stream to be classy. And we're going to name our stream uh, Slimy. Slimy, it's too big. Turn that down to about 29. Slimy streams. And that lets people in the audience know that the stream they're watching right now is not, is not Corrupted Gaming Show. It's not any of the other hot streamers out there. It's Slimy Streams, and that makes you original. It doesn't quite fit up there. So we'll just put that Y right in, be right in between that little space there. And at this point, you've made an overlay. It's that simple. Anyone can do it. You can do it in pretty much any image editing software. At this point, this is an acceptable overlay in the most basic sense of the word. So what you're going to want to do is save this image as a PNG. Now the reason you're going to save this as a PNG is because all of this over here in the gridded section is transparent. And if you save this without a transparency, which is what PNG would be, all of this will have something in it. So you want to save it as a PNG so that it fits. Now let's go ahead and move back to OBS, and we'll see exactly what this overlay looks like and how to add it in. Now that we're back over in OBS, we want to go over to the image source. We're going to right-click it and go to Properties, and we're going to tell it to use an image file. So go over to Browse, and find the image saved on your computer that we just made in Photoshop. Now that we have our file selected, it now puts it on the screen, and me oh my, does it look fantastic. So as you can see here, streaming Stardew Valley never looked better. Now if this is the overlay that you're going to go with, you have to keep in mind that you want to have the game visible. Now for testing purposes, our game's not too visible. So generally when you make your overlay, try not to make it too obnoxious. But I bet you're thinking, Tony, your overlays doesn't just exist, it's not a still image, you also have the chat in real time on the screen. How do I have that? Well, that's the next source that we're going to show off here, and that is the browser source. Now before we even look at the browser source in OBS, we're going to head back over to our YouTube streaming page, and we're going to go over to see where it says live chat. Now this is important. You're going to want to click this little button here, you're going to want to pop out the chat, and as you can see here, it gives us a URL link. So we're going to copy that link, we're going to head back over to OBS, and we're going to pop that right into the browser source. Once we've got that in the browser source, we're going to want to go ahead and click OK. And as you can see here, it has now put the chat on our screen. But Tony, you say, your chat doesn't look like ass. It doesn't look like this. How do I make my chat look good? Yours is transparent, and also it isn't this. Well, that is a fantastic question, and I thank you for asking it. So what we're going to do is head over to a very specific website, and it is right here on the screen. It is chatv2.septopus.com. It is a very useful website, and it is personally what I use to make my chat look a bit more exciting. Now, as you can see here, it's got tons and tons of customization options, and in real time we'll update over here exactly what it'll look like. For example, let's say you want your regular chat to just look a little, you know, a little bit more colorful. We'll just, we'll pick pink. There you go. Normal people in the chat will now have pink as their text, and that'll show up directly on your stream. Let's say that you want to have the font be a little bigger. It's too small. As you can see here, it is now double the size it was before just for the names though. You can do this for messages, timestamps, background colors, all sorts of exciting stuff here. You want the background to be green? To match our slime? You can have it be green. 
You want the font to be bubbler1? It can be bubbler1 if you want it to be. Now that you've got your chat just set up and ready to go, what you're going to want to do is go down here to the CSS. This basically tells your OBS browser how to interpret what's here. So we're going to go down here, we're going to click Control A to select all of it, we're going to copy it, and we're going to head back over to OBS. Now back over here in OBS, you're going to want to go over to the browser source, you're going to right click and go over to properties, you're going to see where it says CSS here. Whatever is here, you're going to want to click it, get rid of it, and put yours that you just saved right in there. And we're going to go down here, and we are going to refresh the browser source once it becomes activated. And as you can see here, our chat is now transparent on the screen. So if we were to stream right now and chat was talking, it would appear right in this little transparent area and update in real time with the settings that you selected. Just as an example, I went ahead and typed in hi in my own chat, and as you can see, it is here. It's got our, our favorite font, it's in the perfect size, and it's not too small at all, I promise. So that's, that's perfect, you can resize that, move it around wherever you want, it will update in real time, and you can adjust it very specifically to fit anywhere on the screen. So we're just going to put it right up here, right in the top left corner, the perfect place for your chat, and we're all set to go. Now the other thing that people see on my streams is I have a subscriber alert that comes with a moving GIF and a sound. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next source, and that'll show exactly how I get that. Now the window source is a very interesting source, because this is what we're going to use to have our updated subscriber alerts in real time. So you're going to want to click on Properties, and you're going to want to select Stream Warrior. I bet you're wondering, what is that? What is it doing right now? Now the window capture is selecting a program and then capturing what that program does. Now the program I use for my subscriber alerts is called Stream Warrior. Now you don't have to use it, and there's tons of subscriber alerts out there, but this is just the personal one that I use. Now let's go ahead and open up Stream Warrior, and I'll show you guys how to basically put your subscriber alert here in your OBS. Now here we have Stream Warrior up and ready to go. We're going to want to go ahead and click Next, and this will take us here. Now from this scene, you guys can put in anything you want. Sound effects, text, images, all of this through the edit scene, edit subscriber sounds, edit the message. You can put whatever you want here. Now as an example, I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like over here in OBS. I'm going to drag this to the other monitor. Now, when you press T in Stream Warrior, it will basically play out a test of what it'll look like. Nice, nice. And there you go. It says Stream Warrior on it. It plays a little graphic. It plays a little text that says who subscribed. It's good and it's great. But why does it look like this in OBS, you say? Tony, why does this look like this? It's bad. Well, basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to go ahead and click Go Live. And that removes all the grid and the editing and just puts a solid color. And if we press T, nice, it plays nice it man. again. But Tony, it's blue. I don't like that. Well, my friend, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that blue. So we're going to go back over to OBS. We're going to click on the window capture. We're going go to gonna go to filters. We're going to go to color key. Now the color key basically tells OBS what colors to remove from a certain source. So we're going to click on custom color. We're going to select a color, pick screen color, and pick the blue. Now as you can see here, it's gone. The blue has been completely removed here. If there's, if it's not exactly removing as much as you'd like, you can go down here, change the similarity, the smoothness, all of this good stuff will basically determine how much blue will be removed. So we're going to close this, and we're going to go back over to Stream Warrior and press T. Nice, nice, and as you can see, the subscriber alert is there and working and is not covered in blue. So at this point, we're set to go. We can move this. We're going to move it right over here. We're going to resize it so it's not so big. We're going to put it in the left corner. We're going to press T. Nice, and there you nice, go. Sir. Someone squishy lizard 30 subscribe to our slimy streams. Isn't that wonderful? At this point, slimy streams is ready to go. You are ready and set to move into your streaming career from this point using my tutorial as a base. Now at this point, the video could end, but there are some other basic questions that people have asked and I don't really know exactly how to fit them into the tutorial, so I'm just sort of going to go over them one at a time and, and answer them. So let's go ahead and start. How do you decide what will be interesting to watch and or comment over? Well, 
that really comes down to what I think is engaging for the audience to watch. Now, personally, the games that I enjoy to play are a lot of RPGs, and that works out just fine for live streaming, because RPGs are a thing that a live streaming audience can really sink their teeth into and get into. They can be there on the first stream, and be there when you're creating your character, and that character can be named by the stream, and the stream can directly influence the things that you're doing, and that's engaging, and that's fun. That's fun to comment over, and that's fun to show. You know, people want to show up, and they want to feel involved. That's really what live streaming is. People want to show up, and they want to be directly involved in what's happening. That's the whole fun part of it being live. So when I pick a game, I like to pick something that I think can be engaging to the audience, and on top of that, I like a, I like a game that's fun. I want it to be fun for me to play, because if you're streaming and you're not having a good time, nobody else is going to have a good time either, because you're the one leading, you're the streamer, and if you're having a bad time, it's just not going to work. So I think it's good to pick games that are engaging for an audience to watch, and are also fun for you to play, and that's really what I use to determine what I'm going to be streaming. Are there any tricks that you do to make uploading a stream faster, or ensure that the game looks as good as it can without having any intense lag? Now this is pretty basic, and it's not really anything special, but just don't have things running on your computer. I see a lot of streamers will do things like have Skype open on their computer, or have tons of tabs of Chrome, or just have other programs running in addition to the game that they're streaming, and just don't do it. You want your computer to be dedicated to the stream that you're doing when you're doing it, because you can't really be doing anything else. You don't want to have anything else open, because that takes resources away from the computer and means that it's going to lag when you're playing the game, because it has to put all of the resources... Well, it can't put all the resources into your game, it's putting it in other things. So if you want it to upload faster, just make sure you don't have anything open unless you need it for streaming while you're streaming. And that is anything at all. That is Google Chrome, that is any sort of browser, really. That is programs, especially big, bloaty programs like Skype. Just don't have anything open and lets us your streaming software and your game and you're ready, set to go. That's all you need. Is there anything you want to stream, but can't for one reason or another? Or is there something that you just flat out refuse to stream? Now there are of course things that I can't stream because I've chosen YouTube as my streaming platform and YouTube doesn't allow things like pornography or directly copyrighted material. So there are, there are things that I can't stream because YouTube wouldn't allow it. But there's also things that I flat out refuse to stream. Now, I don't stream games that I don't f find enjoyable. For me, it really comes down to me having a good time, you guys will have a good time too. And I wouldn't have a good time if I streamed a game like, say, Call of Duty, because that's just not my personal preference of games that I like to play. So when it comes to flat out refusing to stream things, generally, if someone comes into my stream, and I'm streaming an RPG, and they say, hey, Bucko, you want to stream the new Call of Duty? It's fresh hot, it's brand new out today, you should do it, you'll get tons of views. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably get tons of views if it was brand new, but I'm not going to stream it because it's just not my kind of game. And I don't really believe in streaming games that aren't games that I enjoy, because at that point I don't think the stream will enjoy it either, and I think that's an important thing for you guys to know too. Do you own a computer that's specifically for streaming? If so, do you own a computer that's specifically for streaming, and what equipment do you use? Now, <laughs> this is a little embarrassing. The answer is just flat out no. I don't have a computer that was specifically built for streaming. In fact, my computer is pretty out of date. It's not anything special at this point. The specs are not that phenomenal, and it's not the most amazing computer in, in the, the year of our lord, 2017. And I think that's kind of a good thing to tell you guys, embarrassing as it is, because it shows that you guys can stream even if you don't have some sort of super computer, you know? You don't need the fanciest tech to do things. But one thing that you do need is good audio. This is one thing that you guys need to know about producing any sort of video content, is that people can have the shittiest visuals in the world, and they will still watch the video as long as the audio is crisp and clear. Because it, they will... Viewer retention is just immediately taken out as soon as the audio is bad. So for that, I may not have a fancy computer, but I do in fact have a fancy microphone. Now I use a Blue Yeti microphone. It's not that expensive, and it's honestly really good quality. So if you guys are looking for the same sort of mic setup that I have, just get a Blue Yeti. They're honestly very, very good microphones, and I'd recommend them to just about anybody if they want to go into streaming or just video making in general. Do you consider YouTube to be the ideal streaming platform? If not, which platform do you consider to be the best for streams? Now there are tons of streaming websites out there, but I think the main two as it stands now 
or YouTube and Twitch. They're kind of the two big boys that are out there right now. Now, I could very well go over to Twitch, and I've tried it before, but really, it's just not for me. I, I don't like the environment that Twitch is. I don't like the way Twitch works. It just doesn't work for me. YouTube is just a lot easier for me, and I, I wouldn't describe it as ideal. Certainly not. YouTube has all those bullshit problems that YouTube has. Like, sometimes the streaming will just flat out not work, because sometimes YouTube streaming is just broken. That's the thing that happens. At the same time, copyright strikes are everywhere, because it's YouTube. You know, these are things that happen. But I really, really love the community of YouTube, and the audience that I have there is, I like to say all the time, the best on the internet. I have the best goddamn stream audience in the world. I don't care what anybody says. And I really love YouTube because of that. I just really enjoy the community that's there. The community on Twitch is just not for me. And I don't know exactly how to explain why. It just doesn't seem to work out. Now, on a more technical level, if you're streaming, right, and you're brand new, fresh out of the gate, I think that you should stream on tons of different platforms and see which one kind of works for you. But, if you're already a content creator on YouTube, and you already have, say, a certain small fan base of people who watch you, it would probably be beneficial for you to just start streaming on YouTube because you'll already have an established audience, and it is always better to stay where your audience is than try and move them all over to a new platform because they're just not going to want to do it, you know? The retention is just not there, and you generally want to stay where your audience is and keep them engaged there. So that's why I've chosen YouTube also, because that's where everybody watches my content, and honestly, I just think YouTube is a great place to stream. And last but not least, how do I get more subscribers? I could sit here, you guys, and tell you all of the tips and tricks that you can do. There's tons of things that you could do that, statistically speaking, do work, you know? You can ask for likes and subs at the beginning of end, end of every video because people will hear the word like and sub, hear you say it, and they'll do it. I know, crazy, right? Like, that's why people do it, because it works. They don't do it because they, you know, because they're begging. They do it because it works. You can do other things like make your video titles in all caps and have them have really clickbaity titles like, and put question marks in them. When you put question marks and put your titles in all caps, people will click on them, I swear to God. If your video is titled in all caps, Overwatch boobs? What? Like, people will click that. And if you have a thumbnail that's, uh, let's say it's a, it's a thumbnail of Tracer's ass, right? And it's got a big red arrow pointing right at her ass, circled, and the and the video title says Overwatch boobs, and then it's clicking like pointing at an ass. People are gonna click that. People will click that. It just works. But that's just not how I do things. I said at the beginning, this is how I stream. This is a tutorial on how I do it. And really, I don't believe in doing any of those things. I don't believe in clickbaity thumbnails or titles. I believe in concise titles and videos put into playlists that just sort of flow into each other and it's easy for your audience to find your video content. I believe in thumbnails that directly state what episode you're watching. My thumbnail will be a picture of, you know, a scene that happened in the game, for example. Let's say I'm streaming Dark Souls it'll, and there was a cutscene in that episode. I'll put a screen cap of that cutscene as the thumbnail and it'll say, you know, part three, part four, wh whatever part we're on. And having a title that's just obnoxious is just don't, just don't do it, all right? I don't believe in asking for likes or subs at the beginning and end of, of videos. I know people do that all the time because it works. I just don't believe in it. Because I believe that you guys are smart enough that if you like my content and you want to watch more of my content, then you'll like and subscribe. I don't have to ask you to do it. You'll do it. You're smart enough. I know you guys are smart enough because clearly people are, are watching my stuff. And that's good enough for me. But the main thing, the main way to get subscribers is just be yourself and just make content that you want to make and content that you think is good you know and that doesn't mean you know shut out any sort of criticism because if you think it's good maybe it might not that be be that good you know and maybe you could take some criticism always be open to criticism is, is the main thing but just make the kind of stuff that you want to make you know if you're happy and you're streaming and you're engaging with the audience and you're making great content that you're happy with people will just come you know People will come over time. You'll build up an audience and you don't have to do anything obnoxious. There's no tricks. There's no insane stuff that you gotta do, you know? Just be happy. Just have a good time. Because at the end of the day, if you're doing this, and even if you're successful, if you're not happy, I don't really think there's much of a point in you doing it. I really hope this video was helpful for you guys, just to give you a sort of insight on how I do streaming and I guess why I do it too. 
And I really hope that this inspires someone to go out and start doing live streams. And I swear to God, if you steal Slimy Streams as a name, I'll know. I'll know that you watch this. And I might just sue a little bit if you get big. But only if you get big, though. But seriously. Thank you guys for watching this video. I am flabbergasted, just astounded that people have been supporting me on Patreon. It's a really big deal to me that it pays for my food. <laughs> So it's a pretty big deal, and, and I'm really happy that I reached that first goal, and I'd like to thank everybody who's given to the Patreon, everybody who's watched my content. I think you guys are great, and I'll see you on the next video.